Welcome back to the last call on your Braves Weekend in Review. I'm Jack Patterson. The Braves hit the All-Star break, leading the NL East by six games over Washington. Atlanta sent three players to the All-Star break in Cleveland for the festivities. What's up and what's good, everybody? I'm Jack Patterson. Welcome you to week 10 of the Prep Zone Preview, wow. joined by Rex Castillo and Justin Holbrook. Justin, it's good to have you back this week. Good and you back. missed a lot of fun last week. Who, buddy, this one is what college football dreams are made of. Absolutely. Alabama against LSU, Death Valley, and primetime right here on News 3. It gets no better than this one, folks. A top 25 matchup coming in. Two teams looking to control their own destiny in the SEC East, and it all came down to the final play on a Hail Mary. It was a banner day for all three of our Chattahoochee Valley teams here at Fort Valley as all three advanced to the 4A state championships in Macon on Friday. The Carver girls will look to finish that perfect season and add a 4A girls state basketball championship to it. And we get Carver America Sumter part five for the 4A boys state basketball championship. On your side from Fort Valley State University, Jack Patterson, News 3 Sports. Over 30 students signed their letters of intent today at Troop County High Schools, making it one of the biggest signing classes in school district history. On your side from Callaway High School in Troop County, Jack Patterson, News 3 Sports. Not much remains of the 2018 SEC Championship game as the crews get the field ready for tomorrow's Falcons-Ravens game. But one thing we know is for certain, the Georgia Bulldogs are residents of the Heartbreak Hotel yet again after another double-digit second-half collapse against the Alabama Crimson Tide here at the Benz. Denied yet again. The Georgia Bulldogs were double-digit underdogs going into the SEC Championship game against an Alabama team that had beaten all 12 of its previous opponents by at least 20 points. But it was the Bulldogs who took control of the game early with Jake Fromm and the Georgia offense putting up 21 points in the first half in a Bulldog defense, forcing Alabama into a position it had not been in since last year's national championship game, trailing at the half. Georgia came out of the blocks in the second half the same way they did in the first, forcing yet another three and out on defense and putting up another touchdown on offense. This time, a 23-yard strike from Jake Fromm to Riley Ridley and the 12-point underdog dogs were leading 28-14 with only three minutes gone in the second half. The Georgia defense was having their best game of the season up to that point, holding Tua Tagovailoa to under 100 yards passing until a 51-yard touchdown pass to Jalen Waddle late in the third. Our goal was to trap them and keep them in the pocket. Um, you know, we had a lot of guys rushing with a lot of passion and, you know, just a lot of determination to get those guys on the ground. It was still Georgia's game to win going into the fourth quarter. After Jalen Hurts came into the game and led Bama to the game-tying touchdown, Georgia still controlled his own destiny, getting the ball back on offense. The drive stalled at midfield where Kirby Smart gambled on Georgia's playoff hopes. Even with the Alabama defense in the game, Smart went for a fake punt on 4th and 11 from midfield, but Justin Fields quickly ran out of field to run and was taken down for a turnover on downs. I thought it was there and it was there today. and uh, We were going to snap the ball quick and it took too long to snap the ball. They didn't have a guy covered. We had a guy wide open. And Alabama would drive down the short field with Hurt scoring what would be the deciding blow. Georgia's dreams of the college football playoff had been dashed. Instead, the attention shifted to what could have been for the dogs. Uh, I've said, um, you know, that's really not for, for me to decide. Um, that's for them to decide. And um, I thought we played our butts off today and um, can only can control what we can control. Well, it boils down to one thing. Do you want the four best teams in or not? That's, that, it's that simple. You know, they sat at home last year and got to go to the game while everybody was beating each other up and they had a good football team. Give, give that coach across the sideline a vote who he doesn't want to play. And it'll start with us. I promise you he don't want to play us. And uh, based on the teams that I've, we've played this year, um, I think this team deserves to be in the, the playoff as well. Uh, I sure as hell don't want to play them again. All right, but um, that's, that's the best compliment I can give you or give them. Nick Saban thinks the dogs should be in the playoff. However, they'll likely go from Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans as the highest ranked SEC team not in the college football playoff in the Sugar Bowl. On your side from Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, Jack Patterson, News 3 Sports. News 3's Jack Patterson continues our team coverage in Troop County. It was a banner day for Troop County schools on National Signing Day. The morning started over at Troop High, where five football players committed to play in college. 
Standout wide receiver Jamari Thrash will head up I-85 to play at Georgia State. Jatavia Smith will play in the SIAC at Fort Valley State. Independence Community College of the Netflix hit series Last Chance U picked up three signings at True. Joko Willis, Tyree Carlisle, and Alonzo Ogletree will all head to Kansas. Also, baseball signing Jackson Knox will sign with Marion Military Institute. I kind of talked to the coaches, and me and my mom spoke to the coach last night. It kind of so, like, he put it in a way, like, it sold me. Like, he made it seem perfect for me. Heading in town to LaGrange High, the Grangers had three players signed to play at the next level. Linebacker Dester Fitzpatrick is committed to Mars Hill, while offensive lineman Robert Thorne will go to Middle Georgia, and wide receiver Jordan Ogletree is heading to Tuskegee. Over at Callaway, the Cavaliers had 20 players sign letters of intent today, a new Troop County record, including two Division I signings. Uh, it's special. Like I said, like Coach said, we made history today. Signed 20 people. That's the biggest true county has seen. And all these guys, my brothers, and we love each and every one of each other. These are all my brothers. They've been, they've been here for me throughout all my injuries, all my ups and downs. Cheer me on through bad games. Cheer me on through good games. All the, these are my brothers. I'm happy for them to succeed. I know they're happy for me to succeed. Over 30 students signed their letters of intent today at Troop County High Schools, making it one of the biggest signing classes in school district history. On your side, from Callaway High School in Troop County, Jack Patterson, News 3 Sports. Tonight's game between the Columbus Lions and the Carolina Cobras has zero implications on the playoffs. Both teams already secured a spot, and both already know who they'll face next week. So this game was one last chance for both squads to get things right before the postseason starts next week. The Lions lost Luke Collins to a concussion, but since then, they've won back-to-back -back games with new man Brian Hicks under center. Here we go, 14-7 Lions down in the second quarter. Hicks is hit on the arm, and it gets picked off by Michael Green of Carolina. The Cobras will make them pay for it shortly thereafter. On the ensuing possession, Charles McCollum finds a wide open LaVon Pearson. He gets in the pay dirt, extra point no good. Columbus down 20-7. But they get it together on the next drive. Check this out. Tristan Purifoy, go up and get it. He gets into the wall, still hangs on. It is a touchdown. Lions back in business, 20 to 13, midway through the second. Lions trying to get in the stop on defense. The ball gets deflected, but Jordan Jolly somehow gets it for the touchdown. Cobras back up. Less than a minute to go into the half. Hicks pitches it to Chris Sanders McCullum on the edge, who finds Pater. The Lions 12 trail by seven at the half, but come back to win 46-34. Three straight wins to close out the regular season. Now staying with football up to the pros. Now even if you don't win the Super Bowl, getting there can still pay off, especially if you're a general manager. Today, the Rams side you fall a native less need to a five-year contract extension, keeping them in LA through at least the 2023 season. Snead earned All-State honors as a guard in Eufaula in 1988 and played for Troy, UAB, and Auburn in college. Right before last year's Super Bowl, sports reporter Justin Holbrock asked Les this question about the importance of betting on yourself. How much do you bet on yourself? You're a kid from Ufala, grew up in a small town, single parent. How much is that a part of just believing in yourself and betting on yourself? Well, I, I, like, I would always say this. There's an element of the answer is yes and no in that. You know this, if, if you're going to succeed, you better have a lot of people around you to help you succeed. But in the NFL, what you can't do is you can't be scared to fail. Now, one of the best girls basketball players, not only in our area, not only in this state, but across the country has officially committed to where she's playing at the next level. Olivia Cochran from Carver High School announced today on Twitter that she'll be playing for the Louisville Cardinals after her upcoming senior year. The five-star senior is ranked a top 25 player in the country and the fourth best forward by ESPN. Now, she's had a busy summer help since helping the Tigers win their first ever state championship back in March. The word offseason doesn't necessarily apply to her because she went to Colorado, where she helped her team win the three-on-three -three national championship, which qualified her for a trip to Mongolia to play in the international tournament. And she just kept on winning because overseas, she once again helped her team take home the gold medal. That's going to do it for News 3 Sports. We'll be right back after this with a final check of your forecast.